Hello YouTubers, this is the Nubifier, and welcome to a no bullshit discussion about the Vanguard Hoplite. I normally don't do ship reviews, but I do speculate sometimes about specific things that catch my interest. The Vanguard Hoplite definitely caught my interest. I wanted to mention that in the past I also broke down the Caterpillar and the Buccaneer. The links are up on the screen for you right now. So the Aegis Vanguard is a very long range heavy fighter. It's designed to operate by itself, far from support, and in small groups. That's great and all, but that's not why I think it's so important. Personally, I see it excelling as part of a composite strike force rather than out there all alone. It complements the Saber very well because unlike the Saber, it's a tank and it can take the hits. The Saber's very quick and well armed, but it relies on not getting hit as part of its defense strategy. It's the classic glass cannon scenario. So stop the presses. The reason that we're all here is a fourth variant was announced at the Gamescom 3.0 demo. So could this be the perfect Vanguard variant? Could the Hoplite actually replace the Redeemer as a gunship or dropship? In my opinion, gunship, no. Dropship, oh hell yeah. And here's why. The Vanguard series is actually quite unique. Not only is it modular, it's taken that word modular to a literal level. The majority of the crew space is housed in a removable central box. It's such a cool idea because I think that this idea would actually work in real life. I'm really excited about this variant because whenever I walked through the Redeemer, I always had mixed feelings about what I was looking at. You always tend to imagine how things would work in the verse, and I never personally felt that this ship was what I wanted in a troop mover. I always got the impression that it was a compromise or a bit of a waste of space. The interior could never comfortably support a crew that big, and making it larger would just make it worse. Don't worry, it's not all hate for the Redeemer, I am going somewhere with this. I can appreciate that it's meant to be both a home and an attack platform. I am worried, however, that to accomplish that, they're going to have to make it a much larger ship. To me, there's a polar difference between a dropship and a boarding ship. The dropship would specialize only in the assault phase. Nobody would ever call a dropship a home. All preparations, orders, kit checks, and rehearsals would be done somewhere else. And because of that, the Redeemer always seemed a little bit more suited for mercenary operations or piracy. Targets of opportunity rather than deliberate military operations. Flying through space, assaulting defenseless ships just seems like it would make more sense for the Redeemer. The Redeemer is going to get an update pass eventually, and when that happens, I'm going to be first in line to see what they've changed. If they decide to keep it as the same Winnebago of death, I think it would be better suited as a Drake ship with a slightly angular facelift. So enough of all that, let's get on to the Hoplite. From the concept picture, it does look like the ramp was going to be modified a little bit wider. Personally, I wouldn't expect that to make it into engine. It just makes more sense that they would use the fully rendered existing model and swap out the module. That probably means no more beds, no more work table, no more shower, just seats and possibly a smaller washroom. I think it would be interesting to see if that back console would still be needed within the module. I can see a reason to keep it, but that would mean less space for troops. And let's be crystal clear, troops are the only reason a dropship would ever leave a hangar. With a small console and a small washroom, I can't see more than five people fitting back there. So then what about stripping it down completely to one toilet, a gun rack and seats? You may feel that I'm off my meds or something, but I think we should keep that toilet in there because it adds a lot of realism in the design. So with that console out, you could probably fit five people against the left wall and three on the right wall. Now we're talking. An eight man section plus the turret operator could still get in and out without any issues. I think that the most appealing part of this idea is that it truly maintains 100% of the original frame. This could be sold as an add-on. There could probably be room for a docking collar below the turret on the floor, but I don't want it and we don't need it. With Star Citizen, I love the fact that some ships do some things better. I think it's fine that if you choose to use a hoplite in space, you're forced out into EVA. So where does that leave us? In my opinion, the hoplite takes the role as the true military dropship. It seems like it's going to be part of Squadron 42, and I would love to see it sooner than later in the store and in the verse. The Redeemer obviously still has a role in the verse, but I can see it tailored more towards mercs and piracy a very heavily armed ship that can perform interdiction with no warning and no support. I really like that ship. It's a very dangerous gunship that can get your guys on target fast. The turrets with double size three weapons make it really good at taking and holding an area. I'd love to see it return as a Drake ship. It might make a lot more sense in the lore as part of the dark side. I think it would totally complement the Cutlass and I would love to hear your comments about this specifically. I hope you're as excited about the future development of the Hoplite. If you like what I'm doing, please subscribe to help me get the word out about Star Citizen. Fly safe and I'll see you in the verse.